And God, I, I know I couldn't, God. I can preach it, Lord, but I sure can't sing it. So, Lord, I just ask you, Lord. Children's Church, you can go on back with Miss Crystal. Brittany will be back in just a second. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, you can go to the uh, Song of Solomon. It's right near Isaiah. It's right near Isaiah. It's a book that's often overlooked. Song of Solomon. If you have your Bible, you're welcome to open up to it. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for saving a, a wretch like me, Lord. What would I be without you? I, 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 would only, I would only just imagine just the grave, God. Thank you, God, that you saved me. I thank you, Lord, for your saving grace. I thank you, God, for picking me up when I couldn't even get up. I thank you, God, when I was crippled and broke down, God, you held me up. I thank you, God, that when I couldn't even stand up, God, you, you walked for me. I turned around and looked, God, and it was you carried me. God, you are mighty and worthy of all praises. God, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you remove me from this church. I pray, Lord, that you take your feet and you step into these shoes. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you use this tongue. You use my mouth as you see fit. Hide me behind that old rugged cross, God. They don't need to hear from me today, God. They need to hear from you. So, God, this is your service. I'm just a living vessel. And I give myself to you. So, God, I just pray, God, that you give the church today the ears to hear and the hearts to receive. And it's in your mighty name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. In the book of Psalms, it starts in chapter 8, verse 5. Chapter 8, verse 5. I read this and God began to speak to me so loud and clear when I read it. It's, and as I read it to you and as we get in this service, I believe it'll make sense to you. Chapter 8, verse 5. Who is this coming up from the wilderness? Praise God, I got excited when I heard that he was coming up. See, he done been in the wilderness. He done got sideways and he done fell back. I said the glory to God, he was coming up. He said, who is this coming up? From the wilderness, leaning on her beloved. Now we know in the Bible the beloved is Jesus. He was leaning, she was leaning, I was leaning. We've all found ourselves leaning on the loving arms of Jesus, even when your hard headed self didn't even know it. He was the one holding us up. He was the one protecting us. He was the one saving us. I'm talking about saving grace. I'm talking about Jesus. That's who I'm talking about. I want to tell you, I, I, as I read this, I begin to, I begin to go back down my life and, and the things that God had, things He had, he had saved me from. I look back and I and I see myself a place in my life when I was all jacked up. I was on drugs. I was selling drugs and I was in the streets and I was all messed up. Man, you remember them days? I remember when. Mama, when you come to the hospital and you got me, and the doctor told me that I paralyzed my right leg and that it was all jacked up and that I and just couldn't use it no more. And I can remember my brother and my sister, my mom. This side was gone. I'm talking about I was leaning to one side. I was strong on my left side, but that right side, I was leaning. I was weak. I couldn't stand up. I was, I was just real weak. And I found myself with chosen people God had put in my path Amen. to put the arms around me and prop me up, Amen. to hold me up. But when storms come in, see, we all go through storms. We go through storms when you're beat down, when you're drug out, where life's hard. It ain't easy. I don't care what the devil lied about. Life is not easy for a Christian or even for a lost person. Life is hard. As the storms came, I found myself leaning on the other side. And how many of you know if you get on this side, it'll cost you more than you ever want to pay, and you'll stay there a lot longer than you ever want to stay? That I promise you. I got on that side over there around them, and, and the world looked so beautiful. The devil made it look so pretty. And I seen where he destroyed. And as I got, when I got, see, it's easy to look after you get out of a storm, but sometimes when, I, when you get out of a storm and you look back on your life, and God gives you a word that says, Who is this coming up from the wilderness? Leaning on my beloved. God began to speak to my heart. I began to understand something. 
God was the one leaning. I was the one leaning on him when I didn't got leaning on the wrong side and it left me crippled, left me knocked down. It left me just hanging there where I was just in a, in a mess where the world was done with me. But how many of you know that we serve a risen king that loves you in your mess? He will make your mess a message. That's the God that will serve. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. You know, I sit there and I remember Jimmy grabbing his arm around me. And he would help me get upstairs. I'm talking about two or three steps, that little baby steps, Randall, that we take for granted. A step that you can take one step and take both steps out. It looked like a mountain to me. It looked like a mountain to me. I couldn't get up at mass. I was weak. You know what that feel like when you can't even walk, when you can't even move. And I, I knew I had to walk, but I didn't know which way or how or where I was going to find the strength to get up those two little steps. But glory to God. God sent my brother. Back then when I walked in your house and the two steps looked crazy to me. He put his arm around me. And he propped me up on my weak side. On my leaning side where I was drunk down. He picked me up in his strength. And he helped me get up in that house. And he began to speak to me. I said, God, what you trying to tell me? God, what am I supposed to preach? What are you trying to tell me? He said, you tell them I know they're being in a storm. And I know they're weak. And I know they're leaning. He said, some of the church is leaning back on things that the devil's trying to take them out on. He said, but I'm going to tell you now, if they will put their hands on the Bible and take time to read it, if they will take their knees and get down and bow down and talk to me and depend on me, he said, I'll be the one to prop you up when you're falling down. I'll be the one to pick you up when you're knocked down. He said, my name is the Lord. I am the I am. And I said, Lord, I understand. So church, I come here today as a state of emergency. You, see, you better listen to me. The Lord will help you, strengthen you. I don't care where you fell down at. I don't care how bad you missed it. I said there's a king of kings and a lord of lords. He said, I'll pick you up when you're weak. I'll pick you up when you ain't got a leg. He said, good God, why did I give you legs? Do you understand who I'm telling you? I'm talking about Jesus. you got to put your trust in him. You have to, church. We can't play games with him, can we, Reese? you got to put your trust in the Lord. You know, there comes a time in all of our life, this storm is going to come. You're going to find yourself leaning on your own way. You can look at me all sanctified if you want to, but let me get you right real quick. Uh-huh. And you can get some to a place as a preacher, man, I'm sitting here telling you. There comes a time, Randall, when somebody makes me mad, and I want to get angry, and I want to lay holy hands all over them. You know what I mean? Because the devil knows how to push your buttons. Yeah. He'll have you leaning to that other side. Do you hear me, church? He'll have you lean to that other side. He'll make you want to lean to the way you came from. He'll make you want to lean to when you get all your nerves all jacked up and you're all messed up and you're mad at the world, Reese, and all you want to do is like, I ain't just going to give you a little drink. It'll calm my nerves. It'll calm my nerves. I just smoke this joint. It'll calm my nerves. I take this pill. It'll calm my nerves. The devil is a lie. Yes. See, that's what he wants to do is he wants you to lean because he gets you to lean far enough that house will fall. Do you understand me? A house that is divided will not stand. That is the word of God. You can't have holy in the same place as you got in. It's either you choose this day who you will serve. That's what the Lord said. Whose team are you on? Jesus. He said, if you put yourself, put your trust, hold on to me. He said, I'll prop you up when you're weak. He said, when you need a job, he said, it's coming. He said, when your heart doctor says this, he said, I am the I am. I put the heart in your chest, boy. He said, and I tell you right now, I'm the perfect heart doctor. So you've got to remember, he is the truth and the light. Right, he will hold you up, church. I don't mind it. Lord mercy, I wish you could get a hold of this church because I'm trying to tell you, if you just get a hold of this, everything in your life could change. You know, we can sit here and act like we, we don't ever lean to one way or another, but you get there. Let somebody pull out in front of you. Let somebody pull you outside the road and start shooting you the bird. Oh, you start wanting to get in that flesh, don't you? See, that's what the devil does. He wants you to lean, church. If he can get you to lean just a little bit. I told you before, you just crack the window. When you're riding in a car, you ever heard that little crack? Shh. And it's all annoying. You look around whose window it is. Roll that thing up. That's cause that's that devil. He does the same thing. He don't need but a crack in your window. That's all he needs. He'll take over the driver's seat. That I promise you. He will send you in a total direction that you were never planning on going to. That's how powerful he is. 
There's times in my life when I get in them storm freaks where I be get we want to get outside yourself. You know what I'm talking about. We want to get in, want to get into this place. And I remember leaning. I remember leaning in when I couldn't stand. And I remember God sending somebody to hold me up. See, God uses men. He uses women. He has since the beginning of time. God uses people. That's why he created you to be his mouth, to be his ears, to be his eyes. He sends people in your life to bless you. The devil will send people in your life to curse you. Amen. You got to know which side you own. You got to know which way the enemy coming. He even said, he said they'll come as sheep, uh, wolves in sheep clothing. He said they'll come as wolves in sheep clothing. Reese, he said they'll come and act like they're there to help you. And they come around and stab you all in the back. He said you got to understand what's leading your life. What's leading your life. I told you last week, guard your heart above all things. See, you've got to let the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost, lead you. He's got to be the one to tell you, whoa, don't you do it. Don't you go there. What do you do when you hear that voice? Do you just push it off because it looks fun? Because you want to do it? Because you're mad right now? and It, it sounds like it's going to calm my nerves. Let's just get into that place. Well, keep leaning, child, and I promise you, you will fall. You've got to put your hope and trust in the Jesus and hold on to him. He's the one that'll hold you up when you're weak. He's the one that'll hold you up when the world leaves you, when the world forsakes you. I said Jesus will not. I'm talking about Jesus, the one that paid the price, the one that stretched out and said, give it to me. I'll take what they got. Give it all to me. I'm talking about, did you realize that they jerked my Savior's beard out of his face? They plucked his beard out. You think about how strong somebody, how, let me grab your beard and start snatching on your beard with a blood start pouring out your face. Yeah, that's the way they did it. Stuck down into his head, poor thorns in his, you know that? Hallelujah, I'm talking about nails in his hand. Yeah, for me and you, sister. You know, if he had to do it again, it's many, many. To run to the cross. That's how much he loves you. He knows you're weak. He knows there's times you want to give up. He knows there's times you want to lay down. He knows there's times you just want to lay down and quit. He knows you're leaning. He knows you're not strong. But if you read your Bible, he says, when you're weak, I am strong. You ever seen an old building out there, Matt, somewhere out on a farm somewhere, and that old shed starts leaning like this, like this in that old side. You ever seen them? I don't know if you've been out of the country, but I was raised out there. you got an old barn over here, and it just starts falling down because that side gets weak. And the old farmer go get some posts, huh? And he'll take some posts, and he'll put it back up. Up off where he's put them posts up on the side. And you look on that side of that old barn out there, it's still standing where he leaned it up. But it's still got a lean to it. But it's still standing. See, God said, I can hold you up, but you're going to have to do a little something too. Because see, when there's a lean, there's a strength on one side. Your other side's weak, but your other side's strong. And when you're weak, he'll be strong. See, you have to depend on God to hold you up when you're weak. you got to depend on him when nothing makes sense. When every door is being closed in your face and you don't know where to go. I'm talking about when a bad doctor report comes. I'm talking to you. Yes, when God hears it, he said, do you put your trust in that man or do you know that I'm the rock? Do you know that I am the I am? Where does your trust at, church? That's what I'm asking you today. Where is your church? Where are you at, church, in your faith? See, I remember I said, God, help me. I start praying when I start getting outside myself. I said, God, help me where I'm leaning. Strengthen me where I'm weak. I urge you to put that prayer in your prayer life. When you try to get outside yourself and the devil tries to get you sideways, I said, tell the Lord, I'm weak right here. And I want to lay holy hands on him like this, this supervisor crazy. you got to get in that place where you say, Lord, strengthen me where I'm wanting to get weak and outside myself. I'm talking to your church. You need to get in that place. Believe me, you have to get in that place if you ever want to make it in this walk that you're walking. Being a Christian is not easy. The devil is a lie. But you can make it. You can make it. We're striving for something better than precious than gold. I ain't talking about a crown. See, everybody talks about a crown when they get to heaven. I ain't never really understood that. Because of the crown that I earn, you know what I'm going to do with them? I'm going to dump them at my safety speed. I said, Lord, I don't need no crowns. But I sure need you. That's where you got to get to, church. 
You gotta want Jesus. You gotta need Jesus. You gotta understand He's your rock. He will not let you fall. He'll hold you up when you're leaning. I'm gonna ask you this, church. I think it's I think it's critical that we help others. That's in it. See, we all get weak. We all fall down. Are you the one that helps someone else when they lean? Or you want to come up and kick the folks? What do you think? I can't answer those questions. But I believe in divine appointments. I don't believe in accidents or circumstance. I believe in divine appointments from the King of Kings. He puts you in a place at a certain time right where you're supposed to be. Young man, it was not an accident. You come in and I didn't have nobody to play the sound system. And didn't know how to hook it up. So God said, you said, I don't want to come tonight, mama. That's what you told your mama. But your mama said, I need you to come. See, the Lord knew I needed help. I needed a prop, brother, because I was leaning. We couldn't get it working. But God sent you. See, that's the way God does things. You walk in the holiness and you try to strive for Jesus. When you want to get close enough when you hear his heartbeat. I'm talking about when you want to walk with him. When you want to talk with him. When you depend on him. Even when you're weak, you still depend on him. When you get to that place in your life, he'll send you help. He'll send you aid. He'll send an answer when there is no answer. That's the God that will serve church. I see you show up and show out too many times in my life. We serve a risen king. Go check Muhammad's grave, you'll find his bones. You won't find my savior. Death can not hold him. Do you understand who we serve? You are a child of the king. They can't stop you. You tell that devil he is alive when he tries to take you out again. Because that we ain't got no place in that. See, the devil lies to you when he reaches. He'll lie to you. He'll make you feel less important. You gotta, you gotta figure out, you gotta hear that Holy Spirit speak to you and say, curse that devil. Curse that devil. You tell him to go back to hell where it came from. Now I want to show you something in the Bible. Moses was a great man to God. He died. Do you know that the children of Israel mourned for 30 days? Right? That's what the Bible says. This ain't my words, it's the word of the word, the word of the Lord. 30 days it said that the children of Israel wept and cried out. But then you know that when Aaron died, it said all of Israel. It said all of Israel. Mourn. You ever thought about that? God began to speak to me. See, man seen Aaron as themselves. They seen Moses as holier than thou because they know that he can actually speak and walk in the room with God. They knew he was the chosen vessel. They knew it without a doubt. And they seen this man that God chose. God don't call the equipped church. He equips the call. Amen. That's what he does. He called on Aaron as the high priest. A lot of them say he wasn't worthy. A lot of theologians say he wasn't worthy of it. Yeah, that's what they say. But the devil is a lie. But do you know why the all of Israel wept for Aaron? For the simple fact they see him fall down. They see him weak. They see him just like them. He seen him just like them. When they went up and get the Ten Commandments, Aaron got out beside himself and made a golden image of a golden God. And he got outside himself. He fell down, church. Just like us. And they seen a man that strived after the heartbeat of God. All the children of Israel seen it. They said, you know what? He may have missed the mark a time or two. But I tell you what, his heart was right with God. And they all cried out for him. It said all of Israel cried out. Glory to God. Wow. See, church, it don't matter how much you missed it. It matters what you're going to do with it now. That's what matters. It don't matter what you would have, could, should have done. Today, the Lord said, today is the day of salvation. Choose this day who you will serve. That's the word of God. God sends people in our lives to hold us up. He holds us when we holds us up when we lean. How about husbands and wife? We're gonna touch on this just for a second. How about a husband and wife when she gets weak? She wants to lose her faith. She's wondering what God is. I know you serve this God that you say that moves mountains. <laughs> But our bills have come in, and I don't know what we're going to do. She said, Jessica, we're about to lose everything we got. Where's your God? Where's God? Where's God? you got to be the rock, man. you got to listen to me. you got to be the rock that holds up your wife. It says, I said, be still and know that God. It don't matter if the gates of hell come, girl. God's coming. I tell you right now, you just be still and watch the Savior come. And there's going to be times, man, when you get weak, too. And your wife needs to be the one to pick you up and say, look at here. Has he got us this far? Has he ever left us? Has he ever left us? Have we ever begged for bread? 
then you be still child and know God's coming. See, you got to get to that place, husband and wife. You got to get to that place where you know that God is in control of all things. I want to take you to a place real quick. How many of you know this? Give you a little bit about it. I don't you know. I want you to hear this. God sent a man. Let me just break it down for you first. Let me just back you in. How many of you know who John Mark is in the Bible? You ever open the Bible and it says Mark? That's John Mark. So there's two John. John, the book of John, you see. And then there's John the Baptist, of course. And there's John Mark. Did you know that? John Mark got outside his cell. I'm not going to go into it. You can go into it. It's in the book of Acts, I believe, 15 or 12. Acts, I believe, 15. I didn't write it. I believe, 15. The book of Acts, you go into it. Paul was a great disciple. He was, he was sort of discipling the disciples because he got so strong in his faith. He became a mighty man of God. Wrote Half of the New more than half of the New Testament. I'm talking about Paul, the prisoner, the one they counted out. Amen. The one they counted out, the one that fell on his leaning side. And all of a sudden, he's the rock holding them all up. I'm talking about John Mark, that had walked with Jesus from the beginning. Amen. Here Mark is, and you go into your book of Acts and you start reading. Paul tells Mark, his, go back home. You say, hey, you ain't ready for this ministry. Just be prepared for it. You ain't ready for me. Go back home. Go on back home to your mom's house. You ain't ready for this. Get out. A man of God that walked with Jesus. He would lean and ran over. And Paul didn't see enough. He said, I tell you what, get on out of here. Read your Bible. He sent him on back. But did you know God sent a man named Barbarus? To pick him up. When he was sitting there, he was all alone. He said, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, the great Paul didn't come up in here and he didn't sit in the back. For two years, that man tore his life in the park. Began to strengthen him and tell him, I know. He said, Son, you got to understand this. Be paraphrased. I believe this conversation happened on either you. It ain't in the Bible, but I'm telling you, something happened and I'll tell you why. He went in and ministered to the man. He began to pull his heart in the mark. Two years. Two years. He said, I know Paul got outside himself. He's just a man too. He got on his flesh. He leaned a little bit. He told you, get out of here. Maybe he should have showed you love. Maybe he showed you tough love. Sometimes you got to fall in a pit of mud look at the prodigal son before you know you get up. He sent Mark out of there. And as Barry started pouring his life into him, he said, look here, man. God got a purpose for you. God loves you. He ain't left you. He loves you. He ain't going to leave you. Come on, God got a purpose. He starts pouring himself into him. And then if you go back into the book of Timothy, something changed. I said something changed. That man had been leaned and knocked out, disqualified. In the book of 2 Timothy 4.11, Paul looked over there and he said, Take more. Take more. With thee, for he is profitable to the ministry. See, before he cast him out, but a man come in and picked Mark up and got him back on the right track when he fell down. We're going to fall down, church. There's going to be sometimes you fall down and you get short. But church, it ain't up to you to kick them down. It's called the church and you're supposed to pick them up. The church is for the sick. Too many churches nowadays want to disqualify. I told you, God, Christmas, he go right back again. Oh, I told you he back again. I told you, I told you. They the one sitting over there, the Pharisees themselves, trying to crucify you to a stick. I said, God's looking for a church. God's looking for a church. He said, I know he fell down, but I'm going to help him up. That's what God's looking for. He wants you to be his hands and his feet. Jesus never knocked nobody down and just kicked them down. He always helped them up. He always helped them up. That's the Lord himself. I want you to think about this guy right here as we keep going into this. I'm going to try to speak through it for time's sake. I don't know about you. How many of you glad that Jesus didn't give up on you when you lean? Amen. We all lean, man. Hallelujah. We all lean, man. Sometime or another, God sent somebody to prop you up. He sent somebody to help your butt up. Even when you wanted to lay down. He was the one laying down there with you. You don't believe to read your Bible. He said, even when, David said, even when I made, he said, even if I make my bed in the pit of hell, there you are. That's God. 
He don't give up on you. We give up on him. Mm -hmm. Church, you got to get your minds right. You got to let him prop you up. I want you to think about this man right here in the Bible. Peter. Old great Peter. Can you imagine the day when Jesus told him, he said, you're going to deny me today, son, three times before that rooster crows. Before that rooster crows three times, he said, you're going to deny me. And over and over, he kept denying him. So he started leaning, man. He started leaning like this. Imagine he, got a, he, started, he started leaning. See, I'll help her loose. Oh, hell the broke loose. You better hear me. They come and got him. They got Jesus chained up. Life's done changed now. The Savior's chained up. The one that healed the blind, the one that healed the cripple. I'm talking about the one that raised the dead. I'm talking about the one that fed 5,000. I'm talking about the one that walked across water. They got him chained up. And he's allowing them yeah. to carry him off. Amen. He's allowing them. And as they carry him around and they walk into this all hell broke loose, old Peter's looking. He didn't grab his sword. First thing he wanted to do was cut one of them's head off. He wanted to hit one of the kids. Cut one of them's ears off. God said, Jesus said, hold it. He picked his ear up, put it back on his head. Don't you lean on that side, son. I taught you more. He said, you love your enemy, son. That's what I taught you. They drug him off. Peter did Everything's kind of get sideways then. Peter's life begins to spiral down. He starts leaning so far. I'm talking about his legs that come out from under him. He's sitting by a fire. He begins to cuss. Go back to his old leaning ways. He begins to cuss. I ain't a part of that man. Here come a little old girl. You look like one of them disciples. I don't know you. And if you read your Bible real close and look into your Bibles, I want you to dig, so I'm not going to give you everything, but I promise you, it's in there. Check me. It says that the it says that Peter denied Jesus to his face. Denied him to his face. The same one that walked out on the water with him. When he come across there and all hell broke loose man, and the boat is about to sink. I'm talking about Jesus was standing on water. He said, if you call me, I'll come. The same Peter. The same Peter. The night. As Jesus laying there, they done plucked his beard out of his face, matte blood pouring from everything in his body. Peter looked up and said, I don't know. But well, you failed too. Don't, you, don't, don't crucify Peter. You failed when you, when you cursed GD. You failed when you went to drugs. You failed when we went to alcohol. We failed when we, we were mean to our wives. We think. Hey, we sin bigger than us. God sees sin as sin. He knew what was going to happen. He knew he was going to look Peter in his eyes and he knew he was going to deny him. He knew that Peter was weak. He knew that Peter was weak. Glory to God. If you read into your book, can you imagine that he went back to cussing? He even went back to his old ways and started fishing with him. He didn't start fishing again. That's where he came from. A lot of times, church, when, when things ain't working right, God ain't got things working right, you know what you can do? You do it just like a dog returns to its vomit. You want to go right back to where you came from. Mm -mm. Peter did the same thing. He went back and he started fishing. And in Mark chapter 5, verse 7, I want you to hear this. We're getting ready to close in just a second. Y'all bear with me. Mark chapter 5, verse 7. I want you to hear. Jesus had just stepped. He had just, he had just been risen from the grave. Peter watched Jesus crucified from a distance. And he knew that he had denied him to his face. He knew that he was weak, man. He didn't start leaning and he went right back to where he came from. Can you imagine him sitting on the boat? Jesus had never forgiven me for this. Boy, I sure missed it. I messed up this time. I can imagine crying. Praying. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, I missed it. And the nightmares and the pictures of Jesus' face with blood poured out of his beard. I can imagine that he could see Jesus' face looking at him and him saying, I don't know. I can imagine that haunting him. Three whole days. 
Jesus has come out of He had done slapped death in the face and kicked Satan in the belly and then walked out of the gates of hell with the, with the keys of hell. That's what I'm talking about. That's the, that's the Jesus. Yeah, I can, I'll put it like that because, see, I serve a superhero Jesus because there ain't nothing can stop him. Do you hear me? I'm talking about death, hell, and the grave couldn't stop Jesus. I'm talking about the Almighty, the great I am. I'm talking about King Jesus, the Lord of Lords. Jesus, on verse 7, listen to what he says, 16 verse 7. He said, and go tell his disciples and Peter. He made sure you go send somebody because Peter doesn't lean down. Peter doesn't knock down and he doesn't lean in. He said, I said, send him down. And I said, pick him up. He said, he needs somebody to hold him up. He said, church, there's people in our life that are weak and that have missed it. They need help. We need to pick them up, church. We need to quit coming to that one and we think we hold it in now and that we have arrived. We need to get to the place that when our brothers and our sisters, our husbands and our wives, when they fall down, when their faith ain't as strong as yours, instead of thinking that you're holding it now, I say pick him up and hold him up. Get down and pray with him. I say get down and pray with him. When he wants to give up, you tell him Jesus didn't, we ain't either. Pray with him. The words I read to you in the Song of Solomon said, who is this coming? Brother you go Play us a last closing right here. He said, Who is this coming from the wilderness? Leaning on her beloved. I don't know about you, but he said, Who is this coming up? Some of you in here tonight have been leaning. You might not want to admit it in church, but some of us have been leaning. It could be leaning on, on fleshly things. It could be leaning on your faith. Where are you at, God? I've been calling your name and you will not answer me.